When people talk of going fishing on the West Coast, I would have to think bass would not be the fish that comes to mind. But bass fishing is a relatively new fishery gaining popularity and we wanted to try it out. We reached out to Hatchmatcher Tackle Shop in Maple Ridge and they put us in touch with an experienced angler, Matt Stevens. Matt wanted to try utilizing kayaks and target bass in the pit polder area. I'm really excited to try this new fishery in my hometown, but there's a lot to learn. First, I had to meet up with Matt to get dialed in and go over our game plan for the day. So here we are in one of the spots. And I'm excited, I can't wait to, I've never done it. I grew up here. This is my hometown, Pitt yeah. Meadows. And uh, I, I don't think these bass were here when I was a young kid. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to say. I mean, somebody knows when they went in, but, uh, and it wasn't recently, but um, they have definitely distributed themselves throughout this system and which is wild it shows you their ability to thrive and survive in, in such shallow water so, you, you know the deepest water in all of this area is six or seven feet deep well i'm excited like i said it's something new and uh i know you've done it a bunch of times and, and you yeah. uh you've told me it's it's, it's wild when, yeah. when, when the fish cooperate i mean we've got some weather that's maybe not as uh favorable for us today but yeah. we're going to give it a shot and see what we can do a couple different ways to to target these large mouth bass spinning setup yeah setup and here. then we do have a casting setup as well I, I would assume with the spinning gear you're a little bit more finesse yes totally right? totally yeah when we get out in the boat uh, we're gonna be searching for fish. And mm -hmm. so that once you, when you're searching for fish, you're using baits that are technically called search baits. They include um, spinner baits, which are more bladed baits, a lot like what we see in salmon fishing with, uh, with spinners. Um, but there is always sort of that prey element to it. There's a swim bait attached to it, a soft plastic that, that is a morsel that they really wanna, wanna nab. The, the thing with this area, because it's so shallow and it's so sensitive, you can't really necessarily power fish it like you would in, in deeper water. So we've got a bait caster with with uh, Power Pro um, line on it. Uh, usually I would use about a 40 pound or a 50 pound Power Pro. This one's m more of a lighter setup for this area, um, but we run braid straight to the straight to the hook. And the trick is, if you do get a blow up and you do get a take, what you want to do is don't set the hook because it takes a while for them to shuffle it to their back, to crush it, to kill it. So you, get, you wait until your line starts moving and, and it turns just slightly and then blister. So different than your typical uh, trout fishing. Exactly. You gotta be on that quick or you miss the bite. Exactly, well a trout, a trout <coughs> tries to kill it with their teeth at the front of their mouth, where a bass will suck it up and try and squish it with the back just of their mouth. Just crush it. So, so that's, you know, they're eating crawfish, they're eating um, like uh, small pan fish yep. or, or anything that's moving. With the, with the spinning setup, these are one piece G Loomis and Shimano SLX rods. Yeah. We've got 10 pound Power Pro. What we've got on the business end is a, a, just an offset worm hook. And this is Texas rigged or weedless rigged to a weightless worm. Now, this is something that a, a lot of people You've seen jerk baits, which are those longer hard baits with three hooks on them. Yeah. And the whole design with that is is an action that's sort of like walking the dog. This is the exact same thing, but it's to but it's done with a soft plastic. The, believe it or not, with no weight in this, you can cast this 40, 50 feet, no problem. And, wow. and these close quarters, it's perfect. These are uh, jackal flick shakes. We've got them in the 4.8 and the 5.8. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm down to my last June bug, which is a killer color. <laughs> uh, but they're really cool because they are. Um, They've got a really, they're not a symmetrical molding. So any way they, they fall, they're going to have action. Any right. way you jerk them, they're gonna have a different action. So it's pretty cool. And there's, they're light. They're not your bit, your average really big high caliber stick bait. So again, perfect for these close quarters and, and uh, um, shallow water. The key is just get that worm moving, slow retrieve, and hopefully we, uh, we've got some fish that are ready to, we'll to get rock. It. We will be getting it in their face for sure. <laughs> All right, let's, let's uh, well, let's start making our way here down uh, down the bank and see what we can find. Yeah, we'll do a little walk and, and uh, cool. kind of pick out some spots and see if there's any movement. And, yeah. and, and then, then maybe we can hit, hop in the kayaks as well. We, we can uh, cover both angles. My here. legs get tired real quick, so <laughs> I like the boat. All right, let's go. Right on. <laughs> I was excited to try this fishery for a few different reasons. First of all, I haven't fished bass much in my life at all. So learning a new species is always exciting. There seems to be a lot of skill and technique involved in bass fishing. These particular bass, I have been told, are very, very skittish. For me, the thrill 
is, is hunting these fish and really getting excited about the take because bass fishing is known for that strike because they are so aggressive. So all these things combined are the reasons why I'm really excited about targeting these fish. After walking the bank for a while, Matt wanted to switch to the kayaks. A few advantages of fishing in the kayaks are, they give you tremendous range and they are very quiet and stealthy, which helps get you into good casting positions. And visually, when you travel around, you can actually see where bass are nesting and you can target specifically where you think they could be. What we're gonna start with is just hitting the main points. Once we work these points, just make sure that there's not fish on the outsides. They are cruising right now. They're looking for a place to bed. They're looking to get romantic. We're sitting at 58.7 degrees. Once it hits 60, they start making beds. Um, so they are aggressive. We should be getting on them here pretty quick. But what we'll do is once we're done with the point, we'll go into the bays and the coves and just work the shoreline because any of the males that'll be starting to make the beds up will be there now and looking to defend them. We're, uh, we're stalking them, being quiet, stealthy. We're only in two feet of water. I know, I know, it's, it's crystal crazy. clear. The slick, calm conditions aren't really doing us any favors, but if we're, if we're quiet and, and just take our time, slow down, uh, we should do pretty well. Because they are pretty spooky, right? Totally, yeah. See how that's kind of shaped like a parking spot? Yeah. You just put her up in there, work your way that way, like cast, 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 and I'll cast this way. Okay. See, where, see what happens. Sometimes if you cast right back in, if yeah. you lose one and they haven't been hooked, it's like a cat with a laser pointer. They just go, where to go, where to go? And you put it right back in. You can just nail them that way. The trick here is just definitely not to rush. Just take your time. I'm getting so many close hits. There you go. I'm on. You're on? Nice. There you go. There should be. Oh, geez. Barely hooked. <laughs> Atta boy. Male, females will be a lot bigger. Males will be um, kind of swimming around to, to get them to, you know, join in and get busy. They've got the stripe down the side. Large, small mouth have a... Uh, Tiger stripes down this, so they do have a big difference in, in look, but this guy's fired up. He wants to get going. Let's see, uh, let him take off here. An aggressive take, yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Unique, hey? I mean, it's uh, not, not something that you think about when you think of fishing in BC or the lower mainland. Yeah. They don't move a lot. They don't like current. Uh, Smallmouth bass and largemouth bass do get confused a lot. Um, large mouth, obviously their, their mouth is, is larger. They've got the, the two-tone emerald gray look and they got black tips in their tails. So you can kind of identify them when they're swimming by, by the black tips. Small mouth, very much a smaller mouth or a brown fish, not a green fish. Mm -hmm. And then they've got that sort of jaguar tiger stripes on the side. They live in rivers uh, a lot of the time. They, they school up. They do a lot more damage when it comes to, um, you know, any kind of river stocks, but in a lot of cases, if you look at a lot of the Great Lakes uh, rivers, they have Chinook, Coho, um, Pink Salmon even in the St. Mary's, Ganaraska River has a big Chinook run, uh, and they do coexist. So when we're looking at what's damaging the salmon populations, it's pretty easy to point the fingers at bass specifically and group them all with other invasive fish like perch, or carp or walleye or anything like that. But um, it, is a, it is a fishery that can be managed. And, and I think um, with the, the amount of pressure that's on the Fraser River right now and the amount of pressure that's on our salmon species, we've, we, we, we've got an, op, an alternative, an option to, um, if it's properly managed to and, and prevented from joining any other um, ecosystems. If they make it in the river, and they do make it in the river, they will uh, eat smaller fish because that's what they do. Predators are, they're going to be predators. Yeah. But, um, but they don't like current. Um, like I say, they do get eaten up by seals really easily. And uh, well, they don't move that fast. And they, right? def they, they definitely don't move that fast. And in other places, like I say, in the Great Lakes, they do coexist. Well, they sure are fun. <laughs> Maybe the bite's just coming on. Well, let's see. Let's go over to this point, see what happens. Yeah. The thing I found really surprising was truly 
how skittish these bass were. They reminded me of permit fishing. If you cast it over top of them, if your presentation landed too hard, if you accidentally rattled around in your kayak, they were gone. It was incredibly challenging. You really had to focus on all the details in order to have success. After a few hours without any luck, we decided to switch our presentations to some different jackal baits, which have a proven track record in the bass world. So you're gonna do a wacky setup, a, a which wacky. is a really old school setup, but it's super effective. Um, these are pretty unpressured fish, so they won't, wouldn't have any, ever seen anything like it. I'll give you that one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rig up what we call a swimming worm. Um, I'll, I'll do it weightless though. So the wacky is just essentially halfway down the worm, just hook it up sideways. Totally, yeah, but so do it not... with the silver on the bottom yeah. and the green on the top. Okay. And what that'll do is give you a, uh, an action, whether it's coming up or it's falling. So when you're, when you're using a lot of finesse baits, you're, you're actually not, unless it's a swim bait, you're not using a lot of, the reel isn't causing a lot of the action. It's always rod tip. And then you're just reeling in slack. Impart mm. action on it, reel in the slack. The slight little. So yeah, so with your wacky rig, yeah. what this will do, it looks so silly. This little VMC's got a weed guard on him. Um, It'll go through the water kind of like that, but when it when it falls, it, it flutters down too. Right. And then as you bring it up, it's almost like that feeling of gills opening and closing. So you have a lot more of a flutter motion as, as opposed to running that up the shank and you're only gonna have the tail essentially moving slightly. Exactly. This is a lot more action. So what, and what I'll do with this one, this hook might be a bit big, we'll give her a go. Bigger hook means longer cast because I'm gonna be using this weightless. So I'll rig this up. Um, with a, uh, with a weedless rig, sometimes they call it a, a Texas rig. When you're using a creature bait and a weight, a pegged weight, you, use it, you call it a, a Texas rig. But to make it weed, weedless, you just stick the hook in about a quarter of an inch, pop it back out the belly again, slide it up, spin it around, kind of just cover up the, you find out where it's gonna go in, right at the band there. And then you just set it up so that, so now your now your hook is buried. You, so you can all you can make it so the hook is super buried. So you can't even see it at all. Yeah. Or you can if you really want if they're just nipping at them and they're a the day like today where it is slick calm and we might only get a couple of light bites. You can bring it through. Expose it a bit. Yeah. yeah. And then they call it tech spose, like a Texas. And that obviously runs uh, point side up, so you're not hooking any, exactly. any weeds, weedless. So, so when you when you set the hook on these guys, you just you definitely want to give it a minute to, to you'll feel it tick, tick, tick as it's chomping down. And then just, you might see your line move, but don't set the hook early. So you don't want trout hands. You don't want trout hands. <laughs> That's what I used to get called <laughs> trout hands. Well, let's go see if we can find a couple. Right on. Some cooperative fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a nice one. He's on. In that trough there. Get her in before he shakes it. I know. When you lip him, he's gonna grab hard, or he's gonna shake hard, so grab tight. Yeah! First Pip Meadows bass. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great take. You gotta smell his breath and give him a kiss. Oh, I will, dude. <laughs> Look at that thing. Here we go, first, first bass in Pit Meadows here. Beautiful female. Somebody once told me you have to smell their breath. That's good luck, so have a little. Oh, I smell like skunk cabbage. <laughs> We're gonna let this fish go here. Pretty cool fight, great take. What a beautiful fish. She's ready to go here, we'll let her go. There she goes. <laughs> that Charged was awesome, up, hey? dude. That was great. That was awesome. We talked about earlier about, you know, this area we're fishing you know, some, some trenches, really, from beavers, really. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes on a, on a clear, a sunny day with no wind, fish feel a little vulnerable, so they go into these trenches, and that's right, I put laid it right on the edge. Yep. Just a slow crank, slow crank, and then wham. <laughs> That was awesome. That's it's how amazing you how, it up. how they can go from like a static position to just 100%, just nail it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, we're in, what, two feet here? Yeah. And that trench probably four to six at yeah. times? Yeah, 
Maybe, a, yeah, six at the most. Yeah, it's like an, aqua it's it's like an aquarium in here. Yeah. Well, for me, it's the first time I've done it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's learning like anything, but having a, a guy with experience, a great guide, and uh, you know, just offering tips and pointers, slow down. I found myself retrieving a little quick at first, and yeah. that was a slow retrieve, and it worked. Yeah. Right. It's such a it's it's such a departure from trout and steelhead. It's yeah. It's so cool, but it's so different, and I think they really complement each other because I find you know how like you always look forward to the next trip. And if you do, if you go bass fishing for a week, you're thinking about still water fishing in the in the interior, and then you do that for a few months, and you're thinking about when they're the coho coming back. So there's a, a real cycle throughout the year where you really anticipate what's coming. You get rigged up. It's all that's what fishing. It all kind about. of fills a gap of downtime. Totally. And it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Cool. Well, let's go see if we can if we can sniff out another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hooked. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's a good oh, one, buddy. Yeah, that's a fish. That is a good one. Okay, anchor up. Let him pull you in there. Don't horse him, just keep him pinned. Oh, come on, wrapped again here. That was the that was the take we've been waiting for. Oh gosh, he's got me wrapped. Shoot. I think you let he... it off a little bit so you can see if it's moving. That's how you draw it up right there, but not that wrap. I... It's jungle warfare. Sometimes they wrap around a bulrush and then you're you're out of luck. I think we're out of luck again. That's two in a row here. He was smoking line. Gone. Yeah, he's gone, eh? Mm. When fishing is slow, like there are lots of thoughts that kind of go through my mind. And I'm sure a lot of other anglers are like this as well. You start questioning yourself at times. Where should I make my next cast? How quickly should I retrieve? Should I be, even be in this spot right now? Or should I move around the corner? Like said old saying, the grass is always greener. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, in, in order to have success is, is really, you just have to believe in what you're doing. And you just have to understand, you got to put the work in. Like, it doesn't just happen. You don't just show up and make a couple casts and, boom, you land a couple fish. I mean, there's days on the water when everything lines up perfectly and you have an epic day on the water, but there's other days when you gotta grind it out a, a bit and you might have a slow start, but it can turn into an epic day at any minute because you just don't know unless you throw that cast in there and you get that bite. At least me personally, I can fish seven, eight hours and not catch a fish and at the end of the day, catch a beautiful fish and that could go down as one of my best days ever on the water. Yeah, buddy. There's a fish. You got a fish out. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that was that was a good take. Oh, yeah, that's a monster. That's a hog, dude. We're talking donkeys. That's a big fish. Oh yeah, that's not bad. That's a pretty good fish. Come here, baby. Oh, you come here. <laughs> Patience pays off. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good feeling. Smash that worm. Nice. <laughs> yeah, like. Sick. It was, uh, you know, it was a, it was just a slight pause. Yeah. Right, like yeah. on the a slow retrieve, like we've been talking about. Yeah. Slight pause and then boom, yeah. inhaled it, right? It was like that quick little suck. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't have trout hands anymore. Because <laughs> you give it that moment, that extra moment, just for it to suck it to the back of its throat. Yeah. And then and then set the hook. And it's really counterintuitive if you do a lot of steelheading or trout fishing, because we've been taught to as soon as you feel that movement to, to set it, but just give it that extra moment, you, you'll, you'll get it every time. You get a little, uh, you get a little jumpy. Nice, thanks for cooperating. <laughs> oh, she's gone. Just, once it's like three feet away from you, even in this clear water, just so camouflaged yeah. it back. Yeah, you can't even see him. Unbelievable. It's crazy. Nice work. Well, that was fun. That was <laughs> awesome, dude. <laughs> this was a true education in technical bass fishing. It was challenging. It was frustrating at times, but it was awesome. You had to get everything right, but if you did, you were rewarded 
and this reward is what keeps me coming back. I wanna thank Matt for introducing me to a new fishery and being such an excellent teacher. It's always a pleasure to get on the water with another passionate angler. I also wanna say thank you to Hatchmatcher for helping us get outfitted for this trip. It was a humbling experience fishing these pit polder bass, but I feel like I learned a lot about this fishery and I look forward to the next time I have the chance to do it.